In this episode of the Effective E-Commerce Podcast, we have Adam Fisher on and he's got a YouTube channel. He is an Amazon, a guru on both YouTube and Amazon. He's doing really well. And first off, Adam, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks so much for having me, man. I, I'm excited to be here. I've seen what you've done and, and that's really exciting to me. Plus, we're going to have some fun. Just yeah, that. absolutely. So first off, uh, tell us your story. How did you get involved with Amazon? How did you get involved with YouTube? All that. Wow, man, this starts way back, probably a whole year. I was sitting there with a job that I, I hated so much. I went over every day and I was like, dude, because I told myself for 10 years, man, I'm going to be successful one of these days. And I graduated college and that choke dream did not come true. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have a good view of, of myself, self-esteem wise. So I, so I one day I found Amazon, man, and I worked my butt off for six months. To, I, I didn't have any friends. I was 30 hours a week I was after my uh, after my regular day job, Saturdays after work, all that stuff. Uh, but I found a product that I was just looking for and it had all straight three star reviews. And I was like, man, why is it this product's got all these reviews? I started reading them and I was like, dude, I thought I could fix that. I bet I could fix that. So I bought a bunch of them. I went to Lowe's and it's a home improvement product. So I had to, I had to do a couple put this together, put this together. And I was like, if I do this right here, it's going to be easy and I'm going to be a better in the competition. So that's how my first product started. I had zero clue what I was doing. I lost a lot of sleep because there was like, there was nobody back then that would help you. I emailed a couple of YouTubers. So I had nobody's approval to help this product. I spent, borrowed my parents, some of my parents' money to, to launch it. And so for the two months when I was manufacturing and then I was and then it was shipping. It was just like, I was stressed out every single day because I was like, this is literally all my money, man. This take me, uh, it's, it's going to be a long time to make back if it doesn't go well. Yeah, no, I, I think we all know that feeling. I still, I still have that. Well, the, the thing about that feeling is it upgrades over time because at first you're like, man, I got 10 grand on the line. And then eventually it's like, I got 40 grand on the line. So every time you start getting comfortable, it's like time for that next level. I'm sure you've, you know, you know what I'm talking about there. Yeah, yeah. I just I just ordered two new products. One's only gonna cost twenty five hundred dollars to launch. Oh wow. That's a yeah, that's a product that's gonna only sell for like ten, twelve bucks. Uh the second one though, you know, that was this that was a ten grand product. You know, they're going up a little bit. But really, I mean, most products on Amazon I feel you can launch for ten grand. Yeah. So this the first product you ever launched, when when was this? How long ago? It was about a whole year ago. Okay. About a whole year ago. And are you uh, still selling? Are you yeah, still I'm selling? selling that product. That's the, uh, it'll make me a little bit more. It'll make me, so I have two products right now. Two, one product that's going to be in here in a couple of days and then two more in production. I'm kind of really sped up the way we're able to launch products. Uh, <laughs> largely because a YouTube takes an insane amount of time. I did not realize mm. that was going to be the case. So it's taken away from this other part of my business. And also, I just have a lot more confidence in Amazon now because right? you get your first product in and you let it sell for three months and you're like, okay, I understand. I believe Amazon is your second product in. You let that sell for a couple months and you're like, okay, I have all this. Now I have all this confidence. But then you start sourcing the third product and it takes a few months. So it can be, it can be if you want to feel confident the whole way, it's going to be a little bit slower. So let's talk about how, how do you launch? What is your process for launching uh, a product? Cause yeah, we just get a bunch of money. Girlfriend's product uh, two weeks ago. I don't even think it was that. And the process for I launch products is just, man, I don't overthink it because I focus just like you on, on innovating a product. You know, I, I am not launching a product unless I put mine next to the competition. You walk into the room and you're like, oh my gosh, man, I want that one. Right. And so I, one of the products I'm launching right now, I'm putting some designs on it. It's kind of a, the market's really bland and uh, I'm taking designs from a hundred thousand dollar a month market and I'm popping them over here to this $20,000 a month market. And so, right. They've proven themselves over here a tenfold over to similar product and nobody's done it over here. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I launch and I've, right, I've did a, what's called pick foo where you're able to get responses from actual people, prime members that are in my target range. So I know my designs are the best of the eight I had out. I'm confident we're going to sell. And so when I do that, I'm not too worried about doing any kind of crazy strategy. Usually that, usually that alone, the, the increase in conversion ratio is enough to get me there uh, over a couple of weeks or a month. 
maybe 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 two. Uh, yeah, so just turn on PPC, and if that doesn't, if PPC doesn't go well and it doesn't go the way I expected to, my last product I had to actually take the, I took the price from, it was that twenty dollars originally, I moved it up to twenty five dollars, still no sales. I took it down to ten bucks. This is my break even point, and left it there for two and a half weeks. And the second we did that, uh, sales went through the roof, uh, and we started. It got ranked, and when it got ranked, we, now it's up to what eighteen, nineteen dollars today. So it's it'll make. It's making me great money now, even though for two weeks, I'm going to make the bank. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like a part of your strategy kind of by accident in some ways was lower it to almost break even price until you get some traction, get some reviews, and then later on raise the price, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the real strategy is try everything that works. But I thought my, I thought my innovation was going to be enough to truly like bust me out. It wasn't the strongest innovation, but I thought it'd be enough. Okay. And I round up, okay, it's, it's not. So we go to step two and then step two worked and we would have gone to step three if step two didn't work. So I've but, seen on some of your videos, you talk about viral launch. Uh, do you use viral launch a lot? And if so, how I do you use them to do all my product research? Uh, okay. the, the launch service, the listing service is absolutely not. Ah, uh, okay. But I use them. I mean, that's the software. So you got to have some software and that's the software I use. Gotcha. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit more of strategy. So we'll, once you get your product out there, is it just PPC? Like, what are you doing to help continue sales or is it completely automated? Yeah, yeah, no. There's, so I was on a call about a, two weeks ago with a student and she, after the call, she, so she was selling three units a day and spending $40 a day on advertised PPC. And after the call, to a week later, she hit her first $1,000 day, okay? And what I'm focusing on so much is that, is the listing, is the, it's the listing, man. Mm -hmm. Is a listing because everyone's like, dude, if you've got to get, if everybody on page one selling 20 units a day, you got to sell 20 units a day to get on page one. And that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard because Amazon only makes money when they sell a product. So when you search for coffee maker, they're going to show you what you're most likely to buy. So it's really the conversion ratio that matters. You know, if I thousand searches for coffee maker and only 10 by mine and 50 by the competitor, I'm never going to get ranked. It doesn't matter any of that short-term stuff I do to get sales. It's not going to, it's not going to save me. So, right. What we did on her product was we very well the listing. You know, we took uh, the video I put out a couple days ago. I said, this is it. The example was the title is, you know, 25 foot Stanley tape measure. And that's what's, that's a real listing on Amazon. And I said, nah, take that out. We're going to write the most durable Stanley tape measure can install, withstand a 20 foot fall on the concrete. Right. And then we took her, pictures and we showed how you know she can withstand a 20 foot fall on the concrete and then we took that first bullet point and talked about it with what her actual product is and that is what and that and that's just what that just god took her sales out to you know 10 techs almost and wow. so, so what are so obviously we got the title and then what are some other ways that someone can make a really just amazing listing like what's well it's every all step? it's all that traditional marketing let's sell yeah. this let's sell this Let's sell the sizzle, not the steak. So we're not selling two pounds of meat. We're selling the most delicious and most exciting experience, and most fun dinner you've ever had. And so when we talk about right, her product was, it was a bigger bundle than everybody else. She had three times as many units, but she was only selling for twice the price. It's, it's a great deal. It's a great deal. Yeah. But right. We, then we took that first, we took some pictures and we described, Hey, uh, also, she had much more, uh, much higher quality product than, and then they did. And you could see it, but she did. So first thing we did, your first picture better be your best picture, because I see these happen. You get six pictures, and then your fourth one's your best looking one. And I don't know why it's not your first picture. I don't, it does, evokes the most emotion, but it happens on almost every call I get on. What? I, it doesn't make any sense. So then we also took and we to put a diagram in there, described okay, like. We showed the actual, like, this is how much it costs per unit compared to comp competition. Uh, we wrote about that in the first bullet point. Um, right? And it's all, about, it's all about describing the experience right. of the customer. You know, my, one of my, my first products is just, my first brand is all about higher quality. And so we describe it as the strongest this. It's not, right? And that's what we focus on. We put all the... We talk about the actual product in the end of the title. We talk about what it's going to do with the customer at the beginning. All right. 
That, okay. That, so it's basically, it's, uh, what you're saying is just talk about all the benefits, right? Talk about, talk the, about all the benefits. I like that. So let's talk about product research as well. Cause that's something before the call, you told me that, you know, it's a big pain point for you, uh, which I think it's a big pain for, point for everybody. What do you do? What does it look like? How do you find a product to sell? So sourcing the actual product is a pain point. Finding the actual products is, I, I believe, very easy at this point. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Sorry, I misunderstood that. Yeah. No, don't worry. Don't worry, man. And it's, it's, I come into it with a different way of thinking about it. Instead of thinking, oh, hey, man, I'm new to Amazon. Let me, I got three grand. I want to find something. I'm going to throw it up there. My mindset is all about what they, people have been doing this for hundreds of years, product innovation. And so even just today, I'll give you an example. I was looking at, uh, you know, those earpieces you put, this was just earlier today. I, these earpieces you put in your ear and you talk on your phone, you know, those Bluetooth pieces. Yeah. You just put on one ear. Okay. Yeah. I was looking at all those and, and what do I see in this market? Okay. It, easy. This is a million dollar a month market. Uh, first thing I see every single listing. Okay. They're, the top ones are all sold by brands you've probably heard of if you know anything about the space, but they're those typical big brand listings. They are absolutely terrible terrible one of them had the best seller has three pictures um they have no nothing written on the pictures uh the title is like blah 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 and the, the serial number for the product mm -hmm. okay so wh what do i see right here if i come into this space i'm going to be able to i'm going to be able to convert a lot better than the competition even though they have that big brand uh, it's the only thing i'm worried about because i can tell customers hey this is the title is going to say, okay, 13 hour battery life, uh, lasts for six months without, right. It's going to talk about that stuff and nobody else is doing that. Nobody else. There's one other guy I saw today who did that. He came in there with a product I found on Alibaba, exact same thing. Um, yeah, he launched 30 days ago and today he is selling like 50 grand. Seven, I think it was, I, I think it was 75 grand right now a month. He's selling um, 30 days because Right, he's, he has a product that has, I'm not sure if the reviews are legit because he has a very high, like, a high star review, yeah. but I do know the sales are legit. And I know that if I look at his pictures, they blow me away in comparison to those big brand pictures. So I see that. What else do I see about this, this product I was looking at? Well, uh, uh, none of them, why, why couldn't I have this just charged with the same cable as an iPhone? Why couldn't I say, Hey, charges with an iPhone cable and really targeting on that market because people were complaining about, I've had one before and it's like, it's got its own special charger. It's not even like a regular plug-in. Yeah. Okay. What if we had, what if we had one that had a stand, we could just set our product in and then just, it's super easy. We don't even have to plug it in. Uh, I can just have it right next to my computer. I say that hey, nobody's doing that either. Right. And with a market that's so big like this, if you do an innovation that just 10% of the population wants, you should do it right. It's a win. It's a win. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm with you on this. This is the kind of stuff I love. And this is, to me, this is no longer white labeling. This is creating a product. This is creating like is. a whole new thing. You know? It is. But sometimes it's easy. The yeah. products are in production now. One of them is just a new design. 10 cents yeah. a unit. Slap the dot. Hmm. Do you, and I assume, I know a lot of um, private labelers on Amazon don't share their products or do you share anything or not really? Uh, I mean, I talk about the categories, but that's. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just want to, I want to make sure because I, um, I'm, just in case we can get in examples and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would love to tell people, but right. I have one video with 70,000 views and people are like, dude, what are the products? I'm like yeah. 70,000 new competitors, guys. Sure. No, I, I, I totally, uh, I totally get it. Um, so the new products you said the category or are you, what are the, the categories you're looking at and keep it as broad as one's, as a, one's a cell phone accessory and the other's a kitchen and dining item. Right. So how are you, how are you finding these products though? I mean, I guess I agree, I agree with you. You see certain things, but uh, you see certain things like the Bluetooth wireless thing, but still what's your process look like to find that? How do you know to, to type in Bluetooth wireless? Yeah. So it all starts. It almost always starts out in viral launch. I, I get on there and I put in, Hey, I want to see products with less than 250 reviews. That's at least 10 grand a month. Mm -hmm. That's all I put in. And I take start just scrolling down. And what I look for is products that have a little bit of complexity to them. Like students bring me bamboo plates and I'm like, bro, how are you going to innovate bamboo plates? <laughs> They're bamboo plates. Right. <laughs> so something that 
maybe I'm like, oh, I really haven't ever seen that before or just has a little bit of complexity. So then I'll go check out all those listings, go take a look at the market. Uh, but I'm not worried so much about the competition, about, oh my gosh, somebody's got a thousand reviews on this in this listing. I'm worried about dominating them with my product because the, the facts are going to remain. Uh, it doesn't matter if they have a thousand reviews. If your product looks better, if it is better, uh, you're going to win. Yeah. I, I, I bought plenty of products before that, that didn't have a thousand reviews, but I was like, that's what I need. Okay. Right. They see it and they're like, that's what I need. Um, and that's what good marketing and good innovation can do. I think that's a, a really uh, a brilliant point about what basically a few different things you said there, but one of them is you're right. I've, I've purchased a lot of products where the listing looks terrible, uh, but it's just like, oh, I need this functionality. Maybe they don't even have a ton of reviews. And a lot of times, to be honest, when I buy that product, I end up getting it and I'm like, no, this actually is garbage. If this was a halfway decent product, I would have been singing the praises from the rooftop. So I, I totally agree with you there. Absolutely. And obviously, obviously quality is super important. Yeah. Like this is Amazon. This is no Walmart. This is no Dollar Tree. This is, this is, we want quality and they're going to get destroyed in the reviews if you don't have it. And I think the other point that you made that was really interesting as far as product research is if you do, if you do see, okay, what are the products that have less than 200 reviews, but are doing $10,000 uh, a month? That means that there's, some, there's some interesting room. There's an interesting opportunity there because people are spending a lot of money, even though they, these products aren't doing, like they don't, aren't getting a ton of reviews. That means it's a crappy product that people are still spending money on. And I think you're right. Just going in and finding that category and improving upon it, you could kill it. Yeah. I, like I mean, with up to 250 reviews, there can be a product that's been moving for a while. Yeah. And but right, I just like to get rid of products with over a thousand with over that because then you start to get if you open it up that much, then you get all these ridiculous products with just insane amount of reviews, and it's like that's too much, it's too much. Do you also filter for like do you try to go after only products that are selling that much that have three stars or, or under or no. three and a half stars? You don't. What worked with my very first product has never worked since. I've never found another product that way. In fact, that product not even really there anymore because all the people have. That had three stars are gone. Are gone. The market's moved past that. So, to, to, to people, right? My products are at four and a half stars. Yeah. We've moved past that. So, um, yeah, it never really works anymore. I've tried it like a bunch of times. So, once you figure out what product, and I'm sure some of my audience will be familiar with this process, but for those that aren't, then once you found a, a product that you're like, I really like this. How do you find a, a manufacturer? What does your process look like? Man, you know. Get, get your butt on alibaba.com, talk, talk to 10 people with that product. Because most products out there, there are 10 manufacturers for the products yeah. that are on Alibaba. There's 100,000 on this, there's over 100,000 on the platform. Yeah. So, right, message 10, half of them have garbage English, you don't know how to respond to your questions. And then the other five, you're going to go further on and you're going to order samples from two or three of them uh, and then pick one of them and run with it. What I really like to do is go multiple steps. If you really want to make sure that this is as fast as possible, go multiple steps in on samples. Because there's, I'm going to get the preliminary sample, which is just whatever they have off the shelf, and then I need another sample with my improvements on it. And then maybe they screw that up, which happens all the time. So then I'm going to need a third sample. And so if you go deep with two suppliers, yeah, when one doesn't work out, which definitely happens every once in a while, you've got a second one. And if they can't fulfill your order sometime, uh, or they start having quality issues, whatever it is, you got to back up. So it like could save you a lot of work on the, later on if you're just willing to spend more money on samples now. I like it. Let's, uh, let's switch gears a little bit here. And I want to talk about you switch and up. YouTube. Like I think you've, uh, how long ago did you start YouTube? Uh, about 12, 13 months ago, 13 months ago. And so you've had a pretty meteoric rise. Like I th I've seen uh, your videos are doing really well. What do you think the secret to your success has been on YouTube? Oh, we creating could explain a the whole YouTube algorithm. But right, <laughs> but the stress shy of doing that, it's all about the, it's about the authenticity uh, that I've driven. A lot of people come into this space with, just like on Amazon, they have their own niche. You know, mm -hmm. the guys driving the big Lambos being like, showing how cool they are. You know, 
a lot of people don't like that. Mm-hmm. And so I've taken the side where I just want to be more authentic. And she, people, people see my numbers. People have seen it. People have seen my side and screenshots of my seller essentially have seen me actually refresh the app. Uh, I show people how much money I make on my course and they, that's really refreshing for them. Yeah. So, uh, that, and also I know I've learned how to develop videos that the YouTube algorithm likes. And so mm-hmm. I'm able to get those videos, a few of those videos with a hundred thousand views, which is what drives your drives the YouTube's growth. Average video I put out three K views. Sure. Uh, a couple, but the one, vi- the, the, the three videos I have that have a hundred K views, those did the same work as 33 regular videos. Right. So, so it's a bit of the 80, 20 rule there. Yeah, it is absolutely the 80, 20 rule. Uh, but you so, so some of those videos I, I thought I knew were going to do well. Two of those videos I knew were going to do well. And the third one, I had no clue. Uh, how do you know they were going to do well? Like, well, let's talk about your process to making these. Process. Yeah. How do you make these so, videos? Yeah. So I can't say I knew they were going to do well. I had this intuition, like, yeah, these are going to be ones. But I've had that before on other videos that just didn't do very well. Same. So yeah. it's very much like, I was like, damn, dude, this is 10K views right here. And then it's like 2,000. And you're like, what did I miss? Mm. So the YouTube algorithm is super simple. How many people click on your video? Click through rate. How many people stay on your video? Watch time. That's the most important one. And the third one, and this is the one that'll take your video from really successful to holy crap, change your life successful, is if they watch more of your videos afterwards. This is like the icing on the top. So I'm putting out a video in a couple days, and it's the basic walkthrough video for intro for for new people. But but I'm talking about the whole process, and I'm like, hey, if you guys want to see this playlist I put together, it's every video covering every step. We're just talking about the outline here. So if they go watch that playlist and they go through the whole thing, YouTube's going to go crazy yeah. because they know for every, you know, pray for every hundred people on this video, 10 of them are going to go, 10 of them are going to go spend another three to five hours on this guy's channel. Yeah. So the same thing you can apply to you. I'm not trying to, I'm definitely not trying to brag or anything. I had no clue YouTube was going to do like this. No. So yeah. You can get really good. You can get really good at YouTube. Um, just a skill. Nobody ever thinks of it as a skill, but getting good on YouTube and, and understanding it, it's a learned skill. Do you find it hard? Because I, I know you do very well on YouTube, both uh, in terms of views, but also financially. Do you find it hard to balance that with your Amazon? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I find it hard to do that because it's a lot of time and there's a lot of things I don't feel like an outsource. <laughs> I'm yeah. responding to comments. Uh, you know, people message me on Facebook. I want to respond to that stuff. And either I don't respond to it or I hire somebody else to do it. And neither one of those are good options that I like. And how do you balance? I mean, how, how do I balance that? Yeah. Or like, I mean, yeah. let me ask you this, like how many hours a week? Cause it seems like you make more money off of YouTube and in, in your courses and everything than you do off the Amazon. But at the same time, your YouTube is kind of dependent on you. Um, on the Amazon, on yeah. And everything. So it's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah, so I spent a lot of time build YouTube. It took way more time than I ever expected. I spend most of my time on YouTube. Mm. I spend a third, a quarter of my time, probably a third of my time on Amazon, putting out, and that's just working on new products. Uh, old products don't really require a lot, really don't. But it's just, I never expected YouTube to take this much time. And so, and there's things that you have to keep up. You have to keep up. I promise people that my courses are going to get updated. Okay. I, I have, you have to put out a video at least once every two weeks on YouTube. If you take a month and a half off, you are going to shoot yourself in the foot because it's so hard to recover. It's, in, it's near impossible to recover that loss. Uh, YouTube's written you off at that point, And that's so hard to come back from. how did you find out about that? You just heard that from other people or? No, I because I see it. I know. Uh, and I'll be sitting at I'll be sitting at this level of views up here, and that's my normal average. And then the second I haven't put out a video for two weeks, mm. boom, boom, it just it I, I see it drop, it drop, it'll it'll drop by 30 percent, hopefully no more. And I'm like, okay, and the couple times it's happened, I'm like, video out today, guys, let's get this going, right? Let's get it going, and and because right? One video drives another and people are showing videos based off what they've watched recently. So if they're like, Oh, I've watched this video, right? Just getting one video out there in the ecosystem will spur views on other videos. 
and it will give YouTube a lot more hope that you are a creator that they want to support. Your, your early videos, you said that you have the three that um, yeah. are at or above 100,000. Yeah. Did those, was the, the key to success for those to link to other videos or was there something completely different? Or what was the no. key to success there? So the first thing is we got to, we got to get a topic that has the ability to get about 100,000 views. Are you talking about my launch strategy? Never going to get 100,000 views because there's not 100,000 people who are interested. Mm. These are all more basic videos. Uh, a lot of them talk about my success and what I've been able to achieve. The very first video was me talking about my first private label product and what happened there. Right? I only made $700 in profit my first month on that product. Uh, that video resonated really well with people. Yeah. Then my second video that did well was me talking about, this was, uh, I'm not too super proud of this video, but it was like a, the clickbait was Amazon FBA is dead. But yeah. right there, there are tons of people who put out videos like this. I saw 10 people try and replicate me after this and a couple people who I stole the idea from. But why, did my, yeah. why did mine get the most views? Because of the way I structured it, of the way I structured mm. it. Even though there's literally 20 plus videos on, on YouTube like this, uh, so we'll talk about how to structure it here in a second. Sure. And then I, my third one, I literally copied my first one. My first video was my first product results. And my third video is my first year's results on Amazon. And I was able to show everybody my numbers for our first years. The thumbnail, the title, the way the video flows are very similar, but it's a different situation. Mm. And I didn't expect it to do that well, but it's, it, it's probably the most watched most viewed video every 24 hours of my, on my channel. So how do you put videos like this together? Let's, let's stop talking about the, the, the high end air kind of stuff. We got to focus on getting re your retention right through the roof. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what you do, go out there, watch every single video in your space that has gone viral in the Amazon space. If it has more than 50,000 views, that's a viral video. That's every single one. And after you watch 30 of them, you realize every single one sounds the same. They have the same exact way that they transition. They have the same hook at the beginning. I'm not kidding you. I, I, I'm not kidding you. They all sound the same. That's interesting. And uh, once you learn how to, then you'll be like, okay, this is the kind of hook I need at the beginning. Because you got, you got to have a hook. 80% of people are going to click off in the first minute if they click off, okay? So don't let that happen. And then you need to have an interesting story. And it's just, there's so much I could try and explain to you, but if you want to get, if you have a YouTube channel and you want to make, get views and you want to make money, uh, this is how you do it. Done. I've done. Yeah. So there's a lot of principles there that you said that I think apply not just to YouTube, but all forms of business, especially e-commerce. Uh, one of the big, one of the big ones that I really liked is you said, Hey, I did something that worked and then I did it again. I did the you know, first month results and then I did first year results. It's genius. Yeah. And then we're going to do one, another one at 18 months. Okay. Right. Once we have, we went from two products to uh, what, six uh, at that point, probably. And then the other thing that I think a lot of people forget about, like I didn't do this up until uh, probably six months ago is watch the other people's YouTube videos. Like watch, absolutely. look, what, what is working out there? Everyone wants to try to go figure this out by themselves, but don't. Uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't, don't. And, and right if you want to watch my three super successful videos and then my average everyone, you will see that they're, they're different. I also need to understand that there are two different types of videos on YouTube. There are the videos that you go out and you get, you're reaching out to new subscribers. You're reaching out to them. You're trying to pull them in. That's what, that, that's what these three videos are about. Uh, as well as other ones that didn't do so well. But then there's other ones where like I'm putting out a video for my goals for 2019. Mm. Nobody cares about that besides my current subscribers. Right. So it's, it's different. And so if you try and do both in the same video, you're going to come off really inauthentic. It's not going to be very clear. And it's going to be like, hey, for those of you first time on the channel, and everyone's like, bro, you're talking about your goals for this year. Well, this is not the first time on the channel. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there's people who have whole YouTube video channels dedicated to teaching you how to get good on YouTube. Yeah. Let's, uh, I'm actually curious now. You brought up 2019 goals. What are some of your 2019 goals? So first of all, I'm launching, this is the most important one is launching a product every single month. Right now we've got two in production. We've got a third one with final. We got final samples sitting over here. So as soon as the new year's done, we should be able to order that product. So we've got the first three months covered. Yeah. But it is a lot of work to launch a product. Uh, it's a lot of work, especially unless you have 
somebody there on your team, which I don't have yet. I tried to hire somebody. That was an $8,000 learning lesson. Uh, so that's the number one goal. I also want to build the YouTube channel. I mean, I can, you know, the other ones are about building the YouTube channel. Uh, and at the end, by the end of the year, I don't know how much money. I, right, I, I like to set goals. It's, it needs to be at least 50 grand a, year, a month in all from all my income streams. I'm also launching a software that, uh, right, I, it's got to be at least 50 grand a month. If I even hit that, I've shot myself in the foot. And it's, right, with 50 grand a month, that's the point where I can start doing good for other people. I can, I can retire my parents. I can do stuff I want to do. Yeah. But right at, at 20 to 25 grand a month, I can't do that. Like, I, can't, I can't do that kind of stuff for other people very much. 20 to 25 grand a month still, I'm sure most people listening are like, oh, it's, it's not bad. It's phenomenal. But right, I can't commit seven grand a month to my parents. I can't do that. Because yeah. a second, if, if my income goes down to 10 grand one month, and, and then it stays there for six months, they're, my bank accounts are empty and they're back at their jobs. Hmm. And so that's the kind of stuff I want to be able to do. All right, 20 to 25. When you hit 10 grand a month and you know you're going to continue to hit grand 10 grand, you're not worried about it, your life will change. Oh, your life will change. I stop worrying about how much, oh, I got it. I'm going out to dinner tonight. How much? I stop worrying about that. I stop worrying about what it costs to go to the grocery store. Right. Those are the best feelings of your life. Those best feelings, really. Uh, so much. No, I, I, I totally agree. Um, I, I, I have one more question for you and then I want to wrap up here. And the last, I talked a little bit about uh, my product, Performance Not Butter. And I, at the end of each episode, I, I talk to the guests and ask them, if you were me, if you were running you know, my passion product, which is Performance Not Butter, what would you do? What would your marketing strategy be? Like, what would be priority number one for growing this company? And I'm, I'm going to ask you, like, what do you think? And I know you don't know a lot about it. Yeah, but good. Yeah, so I'm, first of all, I'd love to see your listing. I've, I've never seen it. I'll, okay. I'll go take a look at it after this. Sure. But, but just the results I've seen from the quality of the listing matters more. It almost matters more than the product. It doesn't, but it, it matters so much. So I'd love to see the listing you've got here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, right. If you really want to go deep in this, are you, I mean, are you working on taking it off of Amazon? What were you? Yeah. Just, just, yeah. I mean, right now. So the truth is it did so well on Amazon that I didn't have the cash flow. Uh, and my the manufacturing has done phenomenal, like insanely phenomenal. 50 it's, grand this month. Yeah. 50 grand this month. But it was basically it launched November of 2017 and my goal was by the end of 2018 to be doing like 30 grand a month. Um, mm -hmm. And I did that in January. So I was like, oh, crap. Like in January of 2017, I mean, uh, or 2018. Yep. Yeah. So it was, and then, and then I thought, okay, well, maybe this is a fluke. And then February, 30 grand. And then March, 30 grand. And so I kind of was playing catch up on inventory and I didn't have oh, enough nice. cash flow to really blow it up. So basically, what I did is I didn't market it a lot in 2018 especially on Shopify. There was no reason for me to try to sell on Shopify when if I did, I was going to run out of inventory for Amazon. So yeah. now I'm caught up in cash flow. Now uh, I have some extra inventory just in case. And now it's time to start being excited about it and really blow it up. So I do want to do some off Amazon. I want to do more off Amazon stuff. I'd say 5% of my sales are on Shopify right now. So nothing big. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot the cool thing is about a lot of these smaller grocery stores is you can just walk in there and be like, you can meet the guy who makes the decisions. You can meet the guy who makes decisions. And I was a store called High V. It's right. I had one of my professors started a soap brand and like a soap brand made with goat milk. What the heck is this? But right. He was able to walk in there, build a relationship. And now every single High V in the area, he's got his product in there. Oh, that's neat. So, right. He's got like, like three or four high piece. And so, I mean, that's probably how the, the distribution works. You have this awesome, yeah. right? You have something that nobody else can pull together, 50 grand a month on Amazon. Yeah. So what else would I do for you? I mean, where are your accessory products, man? Why, why we just got one product when the, there's so much money in this other stuff too? Sure. Uh, what, and I have to look at your product to really yeah. think about it. It's, it's, it's difficult to come up with different food products to innovate those. It is. It is difficult. I will tell you, I'm planning on doing a new flavor. Because um, okay. right now it's just macadamia coconut cashew. I'm going to add cacao to it, which I think will do really well because people love chocolate. Uh, and I think that'll get a lot of the, yeah. 
Yeah, I think especially females, uh, they seem to really go crazy for the the chocolate, and they tend to be more of my customers. Surprisingly, I think. Um, That's because, a surprise. Yeah, yeah. That, so that is one thing that I want to do, and it kind of goes into your strategy of launch a new product. You know, that's related but different. Yeah. So these products I'm putting new designs on. If if the first one goes well, the next order is going to be five to ten different designs, and we're gonna flood the market. Each is going to have a slightly different target mod audience. Um, right? They're not all going to, I don't want to launch products where I devour my customers for the original product with the second. They're already going to buy the first. Now they're buying the second variation. It's like, you're not making more money. You're just complicating your supply chain. Mm. So yeah. we're going to put out stuff targeted at slightly different audiences, but right. Different flavors is definitely hits that on the dot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I am a little bit nervous about, you know, maybe some people that were buying original flavor or will instead go to cacao. That's uh, okay. Yeah, that's okay. And I because think when they get bored of one, they'll go back to the other. That's true. Same thing every day. Yeah, that, no, that's a great, and that's, a, I think that is something. They'll have both. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, I want to, I want to wrap up here. Where can people find out more about you? Any, do you have any asks for the audience? Uh, anything like that? Do I have any asks for the audience? Absolutely. Perfect. I'm going to put a link to a couple of videos. One of them, you guys will get to, I'll show you my first year's results on Amazon. You get to see how much I actually sell. And right, you just, because on Amazon, okay, let me back up here. I'm gonna link it to two videos when you're gonna see those results and, and what what you can actually accomplish in a year. Because this right here, selling $50,000 is awesome, but I don't. it's not normally typical. And so, right, I've, I think my path has been a lot more typical, at least with the students I've worked with. And then also, uh, we're going to put a link to how I do product research because I have a video, a good number of views where I actually show products and show how to innovate. I like to get into Amazon and talk and show the stuff uh, in there and not just talk about theories. I don't like that so much. You guys probably saw it in the video. We're talking about headpieces today. Yeah. We're going to do the same thing with a couple more products in that video. Awesome. I'll put both those links. If you're watching YouTube in the show notes and, uh, or in the description. And then if you're on listening to the podcast, oh, one last thing. if you're buying a private label course, don't spend 500 bucks. I put one out for a hundred dollars. It's eight hours of content. And I partnered with a guy who sells multiple million dollars a year, right? Cause I'm not a million dollar seller yet, but I'm able to take my perspective of what it takes to do that first product and the worries you guys have as new sellers. Because it's so much different. The guys who launch into a twentieth product, they have no clue what it's like to launch a first product. They forgot. Where so can so people, yeah, sorry. Take that. My YouTube, yeah. man. My YouTube. Okay. Type in Adam Fisher Amazon on YouTube. You'll find me. Uh, I'm right there, man. It's hard to miss. Perfect, Adam. Thank you for so thanks. much for coming on. Oh, thanks so much for having me, man. This is a lot of fun.